sound speeds. And welcome to a review of Deity's Timecode Slate and Timecode Box, two truly professional products aimed towards professionals working in the television and film industry. But before we get going, full disclosure, Deity did send me the three pack of the TC1 Timecode Boxes and the TCS1 Timecode Slate in exchange for a fair review. I get to keep all of it following this review, but I'm not going to allow that to affect my opinion, so you can expect this to be a fair and honest review. Now for an intro to each product, let's start with the TCS1 timecode slate. Advertised as the world's first timecode slate with Bluetooth, the TCS1 or timecode slate 1 can be remotely jammed via Bluetooth using the Citus Audio app. Up to 20 devices can be jammed via the app in seconds, and due to the highly accurate 0.5 ppm temperature compensated crystal oscillator, timecode shouldn't drift more than one frame every 48 hours. It can also send and receive timecode the traditional way, via a quarter inch or Limo 5 pin port on the side. Dual NPF 550 batteries promise higher battery life than any other slate on the market. The LED display is 12 dots high, and most numbers are displayed 7 dots wide and spaced 1 dot apart, which looks very nice. The dry erase board is anti-glare and backlit, and the handle on the back allows for easy one-handed operation. The built-in 25-watt charger can charge both batteries inside the slate itself. The sticks are made of Tennessee Source Black Walnut, and the body is CNC milled aluminum and made of one piece at that. For more information about the slate, pause this video right now, and you can read what else DD has to say about it on their website, or you can go to the link down in the description and read about it yourself. The TC1 timecode boxes have the same accuracy and jamming features as the Slate, but in a seriously tiny package. The 3.5mm port allows for locking connectors to secure to it and jam in or out of the box. It can be attached to another device via the cold shoe or a quarter inch 20 or 3816 threads. If you run a TRS output to your camera, you have the option of using an internal mic on the TC1 for scratch audio on one channel and timecode on the other. On screen, you can see the information currently available for the TC1 on Deity's website. There's information about everything from the quick charging protocols and battery capacity to the size and frame rates. At the time of this video, the TCS1 timecode slate sells for $9.99 and the TC1 timecode boxes sell for $1.99 each or a three pack for $5.49. Excuse me, what? All of these features and claims and yet priced well below every other product on the market that does the same thing. Hmm. Well, you came to Soundspeed for testing, and testing is what you're going to get, and a lot of it at that, but it won't be quick. If you're looking for a quick and thorough video, check out Curtis Judd's video right there. But if you would like to stay with me, then be sure to jump on the timestamps down below if you would like, or you can stay with me and see all the information I'm going to be presenting to you. Now, as for what I'm doing in this video, let's start off with a look at each product. Let's start by looking at the Deity Slate. If you notice that it has the word Deity written across it very faintly right there, you can kind of see it as I'm shifting in and out, and it has two zippers on the side, so you can zip it and unzip it from either end. It also has a carrying uh, strap there as well. When you open it up there, you'll notice that there is foam on the inside of the top because it's not actually that, that padded. It's pretty hard, actually. But when you, when you open it up and look on the inside, it does have the couple of DAD stickers, and there's QR codes for you to get to the Citus Audio app, which we will go through in a bit. There's also on the top here a DAD, what looks like a DAD yellow marker, but you open it up and it is black on the inside. Now I have found that uh, it's a little difficult to actually get back in if you try to do it this way. So if you simply slide it in from the bottom, it goes right back in position just fine. Uh, before we take it out real quick, let's go over what comes inside the slate case. It does have a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, and it does have an adapter. If you would like to plug it instead of in a USB-A, you can plug it instead into a USB-C. It has a little adapter for you to adapt that over. Now, this cable here allows you to plug up to one of the TC1 uh, slate or the uh, time code boxes rather, and then plug it straight into the Limo connection on the side of the slate, which is right here. And if you notice, there's a little red dot and that would go upwards on the slate in line with the red dot that's on there too. Maybe difficult to see because this camera doesn't focus that well. So let's go ahead and throw those cables back in there for right now and look at the slate itself. Looking at the front of the slate, you can write on it using the Deity pen. The one thing that I would point out is that there is no uh, felt to erase it. So <laughs> for this purpose, I am going to just kind of have to use my finger, which is less than ideal, but hey, it uh, doesn't come with a piece of felt on there. So it is what it is. Let's go ahead and flip it on the left-hand side and look at 
the little ring right there, which is going to make more sense here in a second. This here is the power switch. And if you were to turn it on, you'll notice that it does backlight the display and the sticks themselves are very bright. Now we're going to leave it on for the time being and look at the bottom where you see two batteries. These are these can be swapped out either one. And you notice that the little red light goes on there to indicate that there is no battery installed. So you can actually plug up one of these batteries that comes with the slate and then you can unplug the other one too when you need to because uh, they will run out over the course of time. Now you can run it with either one or both of them going at the same exact time and it's not going to affect anything. So you can charge one while using the other or you can use them both at the same time. And you do have the option to plug up to a USB-C if you want to keep it going at any given time. Now, if you look at this side here, you'll notice that it does have a standard quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter out. And it does have a Limo, which is what you would plug in that cable a little while ago. This here is a an orientation flip. So basically you can switch that if you'd like to do tail sticks. So if you were to tail stick it from upside down, then you can quickly flip it back and it's it's this way. So if you have ACs that need to tail stick something and they want to use that switch, it is certainly an option. When you go to slap the sticks, you're going to notice that there is a metadata screen that pops up behind where the time code currently is as soon as you slap it. So you slap it and it displayed the frame rate. After 10 seconds, there's going to be a little triangle down there that's going to flash with every single second. So it's getting close to start to flash again, but currently the screen is completely black and that's an indicator that you recently slapped the sticks. If you were to flip this over, there is a, a, a time code box built into this, which you can unlock by going over here to yes. And then there is multiple different things that you can go through there. And I'm not going to really, it's pretty straightforward what I will say. and it's easier to control through the app. So we will sync it up here in a second and you'll you'll see exactly how easy it is. But you can actually go through any and all of these uh, features by itself if you'd like to adjust it. The one thing that we actually are going to look at is if you want to adjust the brightness, which is over here. As of the time of this uh, recording, the brightness is something that you can only adjust uh, by going in the menu or by the app. But I believe that DAD is working on a firmware update, which will allow you to use this switch right here for a low and um, bright mode. And that's the orientation flip. So that way you can, instead of flipping it upside down like that for tail sticks, it would basically be an indicator of brightness. So if we were to adjust the brightness here by going in, which is currently set to 25, let's unlock again. And we're going to go over here to... That is not what I wanted to do. So I'm going to press and hold to get back and adjust the brightness. Now there's an up and there's a down. Up is the brightness of the sticks themselves. So if I were to adjust this and to the, to the very low setting or the very high setting, that's adjustable. And I think the low setting is going to probably show up on camera the best. And then if you were to press it to select it and then go over to down and press the button again, then you can adjust the brightness of the display. So it can go very bright if you're outdoors or it could go very, very dark. I'm gonna leave it to the very lowest setting again for a camera and then we will save this by locking it real quick right there. There is a handle on the back of the slate here which allows you to hold it very easily with a little bit of a lip down there and it does grab your finger. You can't really see it very well, but there is a little lip that, uh, and, and there is texture to this. So it allows you to grab it and hold it very easily if you wanted to flip it around. And you can slap the sticks pretty much at any angle you want to, upside down and whatever, but just by using your thumb if you'd like to. So that is an option. And let's go through the menu structure here in a moment. But for right now, that is basically the way that the TCS1 timecode slate operates. This particular timecode kit came with three TC1s, and it also came with some accessories that we're going to look at real quick. With regard to timecode boxes, you never really know the kind of connector input you're going to need to route your timecode in. So there's various different options that DD gives you with regards to the kit. Now, there is only one cable per uh, entire kit here. So you'll need to buy additional cables if you want more than one. Like if you want to ride each one of these TC1s on a camera because you have three cameras operating or you just have two cameras and you're going to be using one as a master, you might need to buy additional cables. And just like with the timecode slate, you have a Limo, which is a Limo 
five pin, and then you have also a BNC, the same exact thing, but with BNC, so that you can go time code in BNC. If you're plugging up to your camera, you can lock it on the inside of the TC1 and then plug this directly up to your camera's audio input. That way you can run both time code on both channels, or you have the option actually of using the built-in microphone. So one channel will be time code and one channel will be your audio. And that's a really cool feature as well. Just like with the time code uh, slate, you have an adapter that allows you to connect up your charger, which is USB-A directly into a USB-C. So that way you can charge via a USB-C if that would be an option you'd like to do. So those are kind of cool features. There is also, if you notice on the back here, a cold shoe adapter, which screws in and locks. But if you don't want those, you can take them off. Now there is soft side Velcro right here and the DD slate comes with hard side Velcro on it right there. And it does come with six additional soft side Velcro pads that you can use to put on there and then put onto a camera or put wherever you'd like to. So this will save you a little bit of trouble from having to find some of these uh, soft side Velcro sticky pads when you first go to use them. So that is a little bit of the accessories and I'm gonna go ahead and strip these things off because I'm not gonna be using those in any of the testing that we do. The anatomy of the TC1 is very, very basic. It simply has the output for the time code right there. It has the microphone on top next to three little indicators. One is power, one is sync, and one is pair, and we'll get into that in a minute. There's also a rotary knob, just for like what you would find on the TCS1. And there is a, a power and back button on the bottom. And aside from that, there is a way to charge it up, which is a USB-C on the bottom. And all of these are identical. So if you power them on, they're all gonna power on the exact same way, and they're all going to indicate straight out of the box the exact way on top with just the, the indicator being TC1 box. That is the unique identifier for each one of these, but you will probably wanna change those because TC1 box is not gonna help anybody if you were to try to uh, figure out exactly which box is which. So you might wanna label these one like Cam1, Master, Cam B, whatever. And if you were wondering, that does have a lock button there and how to unlock it if it is locked. If you notice it's locked right now, you simply press the button three times. One, two, three, that's the back button or power button. And now you can go through and you can change your settings. Now, for the most part, it's straightforward. You can look at the manual if you'd really like to. It does give you options for master run, auto jam, jam once, and then lock but we're not gonna really go through every single one of these little things because it's easier to do when you have access to the app. So let's go ahead and pair this up right now to the app. I'm starting up the Citus Audio app for the very first time and note, you do have to enable both Bluetooth and GPS because Bluetooth protocol requires GPS to be functional and active in order for this to, to operate and to pair up all your timecode devices. I'm gonna hit agree and then it comes up to the main screen here. Now, in order for me to pair up all the devices, I'm going to have to turn on each of the time code devices, scroll over one, two, three, scroll over, and I'm going to go to Bluetooth, select it, select again, and go to reset. It says fail, then success. Kind of interesting. Okay, let's try that one more time just to make sure. Reset, yes, fail, success. Okay, whatever. We're going to assume that it went through because it did say success ultimately. One, two, three. And then Bluetooth, select fail success. Okay, so I guess it's uh, going through. We're going to hope so. Two, three. I'm going to go over here to Bluetooth. Press the button one more time. Reset, fail success. Okay, so I'm guessing that the reason it's saying fail success is because I turn it on real quick and then instantly go over to reset it. Now, because we have a power button on the time code boxes, but we do not have a an, uh, power button here. You have to actually have an unlock feature. Aside from that, it does function the exact same way on the time code slate. So I'm gonna go over here to unlock. Now I'm gonna scroll over and I'm gonna say reset, yes. Now this is actually gonna have to start itself up. Now, since my lock screen came on, let me unlock my phone. Now, Here's my, my phone, and, I, and since everything has been reset now, I'm gonna click on the plus button. 
it's going to say, would you like to access this device location? Well, part of the Bluetooth protocol, remember, is having the GPS turned on. I'm going to say, while using the app, let's go ahead and say yes. And it should find all my devices. So look at this, time code slate one, box one, box one, box one. I'm going to say setup, zero of four, and three of four. It's finding all of them. One pending failed. Well, you know what? We're going to try this one more time. And I'm going to go over here to, as soon as it comes back up, what, what failed. There's one of the time code boxes. So that's okay. We're going to try it one more time. As soon as it's up. <laughs> Come on now. What are you doing? Uh, I don't know which one did not sync up, but we're going to look at them all here. They look like they're all ready. I'm going to try hitting that button one more time. And it looks like that was the time code box, perhaps, that failed. Okay, so now it's synch synchronized up. Now you can drag and move the devices around as you see fit. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the slate at the very, very bottom. Now, one of the things you can do is rename your devices, and I highly recommend doing that. Now I'm going to take this, whichever time code box this is, I'm going to click the little three dots and go to rename. And I'm going to rename this one master. So let's go caps, M-A-S-T-E-R. That is master. I'm going to hit confirm and let's see which one that one was. That's time code box TC1. This is master right here. So I'm going to move it to the top. That is now our master control uh, uh, for all of them. It's going to be also, if you go into the three dots, set as master node. I'm going to click that button there. So now it is our master node. It should uh, basically have all the others that follow after it. And so I can sync all of them from that one master. Uh, alrighty, I'm going to go into this time code box. I'm going to rename this one just TC1. Sure, that's fine. And then the other time code box, I'm going to go into rename also. And I'm going to say time code 2. Say confirm. The time code slate, I'm going to rename. And I'm going to call this just slate. So S L A T E. Whoops, helps if I spell it right. A T E. Come on now. There we go, Slate. And we are now fully up and have renamed everything. Now I'm going to just verify once real quick. See that little Y there? That is our masters, master node. So I'm going to go ahead and just verify that. It doesn't have that as an option, master node anymore. But if I go into the other ones, it would say set that as a master node. And you would see that little Y switch over to a different one. And that would be... This now is the master node, if you noticed a little why there. But I want the one that's called master to be our master node. Now, you need to have these all set up relatively the same. And you can go into the settings here, or you can go into the settings on any one of these devices. I'm going to go into the master node right here in the master time code box. Now, notice it does say right now that it is set to what it would, just, I guess, assume to be time of day. You can reset it if you'd like to say, sure, reset. Uh, and it basically shows like midnight on the time code, but I don't want that to have happen. What I want to do is I want to go into settings. And if you notice here, it has various different options. First thing I'm going to do is click this little button right here, to, which is the clock yellow icon, and it sets it to my clock, which is time of day. Most of the time we operate uh, at time of day on our slates. You don't have to, but that's a, a selection you have. Now, user bits, it does say things like SDMY. I'm going to actually set it to year, month, day, and I don't know what S is. It's kind of interesting. So today is, it's that's incorrect. It's not 2020. So what I'm going to do is hit the, the little calendar button there, and it says 22, and then this is November 16th. And there's zero there. So I guess that's how many hours or something. I'm not exactly sure what that last user bit is. But that's the, the user bit that it's set up for. I'm going to set my frame rate now to 2398. And this is where you can go into the menu structure on each of these devices and set this the way you like it to. And you see time code type, inter, uh, internal free run. That's going to be best for us. Now, output volume, it says longitudinal time code, LTC, or audio time code. That would be using the time code uh, and the microphone on top. I'm just going to go for LTC for right now, but you can choose to do something else if you'd like to. Now, this is our time of day, and it'll be a little bit difficult to see, but there's 17 hours right there. And this one here is set to, or 17, it's midnight 1744 
right now, which is time of day matching my, my phone. This right here thinks it's a few minutes ago. This one here thinks it's about a minute later than this one. This one here looks like it's at one o'clock. The slate seems to think it's at one o'clock for some reason. Now, remember, this is our master node. So what I'm going to do now is hit sync all. And see, this comes up and says, you want to sync everything to this time? Now, if I want to set this time to something different, I can go down here and do just that. And I'm going to verify time of day by clicking that. And I'm going to hit sync. It's synchronizing one, two, three. Where is the fourth one? Oh, it didn't synchronize one of them. I'm going to hit retry. One, two, three, four. And now it's synchronized them all. And if you notice, this is our master time clock, which is identical here. And now they're all in perfect sync. Now, another thing it did is if you notice, it changed our frame rate to 2398. All by default, we're set to 25 frames for some reason. So they're all set now to the exact same frame rate. And it should be set with the exact same Y, M, D, S, 23, all the exact same settings. Now, if I wanted to, let's say, change on the master node here, I said, oh, no, I wanted to actually change this to audio time code. And then I go over here and I can do the same exact thing. Sync all, sync, one, two, three, and it's probably going to glitch again. All right, let's try it again. One, two, three, four, and now it's confirmed. So now I'm going to go into one of the other devices here, time code, and whoops, wrong one. Go into the little light there, and it's still set to longitudinal. Hmm, that's interesting. It did not change the, the output volume to audio time code. So we'll go ahead and do that manually just in case. And that means also, since it didn't carry that with it, which I thought it would, very interesting. Now here's one of the other cool things you can do with the app. I'm gonna flip over the slate so you can see the front screen now. And if I open it up and then slap the sticks, you see that it just displays the frame rate. Well, if I go down here to slate, then what I can do is go into show extra. And now you can go into the menu and do it, but it's so much easier just to do it via the app. And if you notice, it's going to say extra what? Well, extra user bits, I can set to show, for example, the user bits showing the date as the 22nd year, the 11th month, and the 16th day. And it's only displaying it for two, uh, two tenths of a second. So if I were to enable that, now it's going to, slot, to do both of those. Now, if I say, wait a minute, that's going way too quick. Let's slow it down a little bit. So I'm going to set it to now a sixth of a second, uh, a sixth of a second. And now, as soon as I do that and slap the sticks, it's now displaying those slower. Now, one of the cool things is also you can manually set these to be whatever you'd want. So if I want to set this to say sound and then hit confirm. Now you have an orientation over here. How would you like it to be le centered left or, or right? I'm going to hit show first left, right, or center. I'm going to choose center, and then I'm going to hit show over here. The next one is going to be set to capital S-P-E-E-D-S, -E speeds, confirm. And now, if I were to set this for, let's say, six tenths of a second, and again, six tenths of a second, now, I'm going to turn off user bits. They're already turned off. So now if I were to slap the sticks, I don't need to see the frame rate for a very long time. We should know what that is. As a matter of fact, let's just turn it off. We don't need to see the frame rate. But when you slap the sticks, I want it to say sound speeds. So there you go right there. You can set uh, extra. You could set it to automatically and always show the different characters. And it even has, interestingly enough, has some Chinese characters down there you can choose. Um, you also have the option to enter some custom text if you'd like. So I could say, uh, let's just do, I'm going to have it type in, whoops, that was a misspelled word, S-O-U-N-D, sound, say OK. And if I were to open this up, slap the sticks, oh, it didn't actually do anything. Interesting. OK, well, that was quite interesting to me. I'm going to say, just go back to extra screen and just run with it there. I'm not exactly sure what that was trying to do. I thought it was going to always display this choice, which you can set to Chinese characters or whatever you'd like it to. Uh, I'm going to set it back to time code. And then custom text, I could have sworn that that would have it say, oh, there it is. I just didn't enable it. That's what I needed to do. So I could have it automatically just say the word sound for whatever reason, and you're doing a dumb slate there. But I'm going to turn it back to our time code setting there. So I'd, that was a user error. That was not the DAD system. 
uh, erroring. That was me erroring. So I'm going to go back over here to parameters and you can again set all of these if you would like. Since you've been playing inside of Slate, it is now set as the master node. And I don't need to do that. I'm going to go back over and set master node as the master that I named that with the metadata. It's set now to master node. Now look at this real quick, workstation. Workstation shows all the time code boxes right here, including their battery indicators. Now you can look at the upper right-hand corner of the screen there and see 30 hours or whatever it happens to be, like 29 hours on that one, 31 hours on that one. And you can also see it on the slate as well. Now, oops, it's over here. That's the reason why it's on this side. Go over here, say yes, unlock. And it is now set to, both of these are set to 100% battery. Now, if I scroll down here and look at the battery indicators, you can see in the upper right-hand corner, they're all set, to, they're all on the Wi-Fi, but the slate has 15 hours of battery power left and it says full battery. Now watch this. If I were to pop out one of the batteries, you're going to see that the 15 hours doesn't change, but what does change is it now starts to display half battery power. I shouldn't have pushed that button. And if you can see it, right there next to the time, put this back in there. Now it's automatically come back up to full battery power. So you can see that it's actually pretty cool how that functions. Now with regards to the time code slates, or I'm sorry, the time code boxes themselves, you can see that there is a exact timer left to show you 29 hours and 31 minutes. This one's 39 or 30, hours and 59 minutes, it just went from 31 hours, and this one is 30 hours and two minutes. Now, if you leave the screen on for an extended amount of time, that will go down. So you'll see the time actually go down if you were to one, two, three, start playing around inside this menu. And now you see how it's gone to 24 hours because if you leave the screen on, it's going to reflect that. The time is now changed. So this now says four, 24 hours and 15 minutes. As soon as the screen goes back to sleep, it should go back up. So go to sleep little screen. And now it's back to 30 hours and three minutes. It's fairly accurate display right there. And then you can also sync if you'd like to all devices from this screen. I'm gonna select time of day by hitting the little clock, hit sync, and now it's synchronizing all of them. So again, it looks like it's gonna be not synchronizing one of them. I'm gonna hit retry and it should go through this time, confirm. So there seems to be a little bit of a, confusion it has, but they're all in perfect sync. True to Deity's nature, they've included a lot of accessories with the cost of each device, and each one of them seems to be made well. No complaints. They seem to have thought about everything, except maybe a Limo 4 pin, which is sometimes used. Deity has picked and choosed features from the competition and then amped them up and released them for less. So why don't we test some of these claims, starting with battery power. Deity claims that if you leave the sticks open at full brightness, they should last for 25 plus hours. So that seems like a good place to start. The app allows us to leave the Slate's LED display on with the sticks open. So I did just that. And after hours and hours of recording with two NPF 550 batteries installed, that is a bit shorter than the 25 plus hours claimed at full brightness. But let the truth be known, this is ridiculous. No one ever does that. Why would anyone leave a Slate open and expect it to last 25 hours at full brightness? So honestly, I'm not going to count that against DD at all. But in case you're curious, if you don't install either battery and you simply feed it a standard 2 amp USB-C power feed, it only supplies enough power to keep the LEDs on at a brightness level of four or below. It can't get all the way up to five or six, not enough power. But it does make you wonder, if you are using the batteries, how long will it last if the LEDs are off? Considering how long the slate stayed powered up with the LEDs on at full brightness, I decided to test the TCS1 with only one of the two NPF 550 batteries installed. And I'm glad I did. The duration of the batteries is much longer than any other slate on the market. And if I had two, the test would have taken me twice as long to do. And this is where I can't help but be a little bit frustrated at Deity. You know, some content creators have other things they need to do than spend five days testing half of the battery capacity of some of your products. This insane battery life nearly threw off my production schedule, and I'm glad I didn't use both batteries because if I did, I wouldn't have been able to test anything else for over nine days. Now, content creator hat off and production sound hat on. What the f***? So even if I left the slate on all week, it would still be working a week later. That's something no other competitor on the market can claim about their slates, and it's mind-boggling.
You broke the expectations of battery life and time code slates, Deity, and let the truth be known, I'm sure there's a lot of manufacturers out there gritting their teeth at the innovation behind putting NPF 550 batteries inside of time code slates. And I'm sure they're not happy at all with you, but you know me, I love it. We'll check the battery discharge rate in a moment, but first, what about the charging? If we only had the one NP battery that we exhausted the slate with and we needed to recharge it back up as quickly as possible, the inbuilt charger inside the slate could fully recharge that battery in just over two hours. That's nearly five days of battery life in just two hours using a rapid charger. And now let's charge up the TC1 timecode boxes and see how long it takes them. That's a 65 watt 3 amp charger that the DD three way cable is connected to. If you want to test the charging speed of a device, you got to throw power at it as fast as it can handle, and this charger is made for that very thing. Even split three ways, the TC1's charged really fast. Charge times for each sync box is displayed on the screen, and if you're curious about the charger, link down in the description. The only thing about the time code boxes that I'm not 100% sold on is a little thing the batteries aren't user replaceable, but guess what? That is the DED way, and it's nothing you need to be concerned about, I'm not. I've used DED products for years, and here's what I will tell you. They have battery life down to a science, and the TC1s have a countdown clock for the remaining battery life. So you even see on the device how much life there is left on the batteries. And it's also nothing you need to be concerned about because guess what? It's time code. You can jam a camera, it will hold its time code, and then you can simply run back and charge up the battery. So if the, you came into a day and all of your time code boxes were completely dead, you simply charge them up for maybe three to five minutes. Then you go around and jam all your cameras, set them to jam sync, and then go charge up all your time code boxes. And you're going to be fine in only an hour or two. So we've now tested the Slate's battery life with the LEDs both on and off, and we've also checked its recharge time, along with the recharge time of the time code boxes. But what we have not yet done is the time code boxes battery life, or even the accuracy of the time code in general. So why don't we do both of those at the same time? I connected up the Slate, all three time code boxes, and just for fun, two BPTRX units in time code mode. And here we are in Reaper, where I've opened up the polyphonic broadcast wave file that my sound device is Mixed Pre 6 recorded. And channel number one is the Slate, channel two is the Master Sync Box, three is TC1, four is TC2, both sync boxes, and BPTRX 1 and 2, just for fun, is recorded on channels five and six. Now, if you notice also matching the Slate, uh, line for the track is a longitudinal time code reader down here. It's also a 70 time code reader for the slate channel. And then for the master channel is right here, time code one here, time code two here, time code three, or rather BPTRX one and two is down here. So we can see at a glance what the time code is that's coming off of each one of these devices. Now, if you notice at the very beginning here, it took me a moment to get everything in sync. So the sync box for, that was uh, basically connected up right here to the uh, integrated into the slate was constantly running. As soon as I turned it on, I hit record. And then the master box was right here. And I use that to jam the other devices. Actually, I, I jammed off of my phone and jammed all four of the devices. And then after that, I jammed the BPTRX 1 and 2. So that's what we have down here. Those were jammed at the same time. So we basically have, starting right here, the clock right there. And at this point, we are, what does Reaper say? If I were to select this thing and go over to... This is, it says four minutes and 23 seconds. So that's roughly four minutes and actually, let's see. It says 426. So at 426, basically, whatever the times are that we recorded, it starts at basically 426. So I could go ahead and delete them, I guess. Let me go ahead and just do that. Get them all out of the way so that way I don't need to even need to look at them anymore. We know that those are be getting them in sync and we're going to start everything fresh where everything is timed together. So 426 plus the times here is the maximum amount of time that these devices, oh no, <laughs> I should have selected everything at the exact same time. So let's undo the move. Let's highlight everything and move over. That's the way we're going to do it. Okay, so now we're looking at all the devices at the exact same time. Now, if you notice right here, the master sync box died first. So what we're going to do is select right here and see what the time is where it died. We're going to start by looking at the actual time itself, and it would be right down there 20, let's see, 29 minutes and 15, uh, 29 hours, 15 minutes and 20 seconds. And it pops around every time I would click. So that right there is the point that it died. And so the master sync box lasted for 29 hours. 
And let's go ahead and look at the next one, which was time code box number two. And it died after right about 29, hour, 29 hours, 47 minutes and 55 seconds. And looking at the last one, which is time code box number one, it died what it looks like right at 31 hours, 15 minutes and 35 seconds, almost 36 seconds. So basically that's pretty good. They lasted, they all lasted at least 29 hours. So what we're gonna do now is look at the actual time code uh, the, and compare the time code from all the devices. So when we first hit start and we hit play, you can notice if I hit pause, all of the time code is going to be jammed, synced together, and it's going to be perfectly in sync. If I go zooming all the way in, you're going to be able to see the waveforms, but we don't need to look at that because we have a time code reader now. Now, keep in mind that the time code uh, itself in the temperature compensated crystal oscillators are supposed to keep it from drifting any more than one frame every 48 hours. So if it stays accurate, then any one of these is not going to drift more than one frame apart. Because even if, let's just say 24 hours in, if this one right here has drifted uh, one frame or something like that forward, and the other one has drifted one frame backwards, these should not, not, not appear to have drifted more than what looks like two frames. So if it drifts, if any one of these drifts more than two frames off of the others, we'll know that it did not maintain its accurate time code. But we're going to be optimistic and look at it from the very beginning here. I'm going to hit pause. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Cool. Those are all in sync again. And 26, 26. So as expected, when we hit time, when we hit basically the start time on the uh, the the sync boxes there, basically they're jammed sync together. So if I were to zap ahead, let's say to what is that, two hours in, we're going to hit play here and look at it. Pause. Five, 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 five. five. And again, 28, 28, 28, 28, and right there, 666. So basically two hours in and we are good and strong. So let's zap ahead now to four hours roughly in, and we're gonna hit play again, keeping in mind that sometimes what will happen is the time code will ever so slightly start to drift. And if I pause right between two frames, it may look like it's, it's half a frame. It may be only like one, tenth of a percent off but if i pause in that exact little gap there it'll look like it's a frame off which is why i'm hitting play pause a couple of different times so all of these are four 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 and two 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 so everything is accurate now four hours in which is ac more accurate than many time code boxes used to be back in um, only about 10 years ago so we're six hours in now and normally we would have to rejam now because it's at lunch 14 14 14 still everything is in perfect sync one 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 Still, everything is in perfect sync. Okay, and we're right at zero. So now we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit more bold. We're gonna jump ahead to 10 hours into our day. So at this point, we're gonna be looking for, uh, well, hopefully we will have already had our second snack by then. Hit play and pause, 7777. Seven, seven, seven. Slam on accurate. 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. Okay, all the way across. 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. Okay, so these are all accurate. Seven, 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 six. Okay, so six. So this is this is probably like they're all exactly the same and they're all aligned perfectly, but one of them might have been ever so slightly and I might have been pausing like between it. So if I hit play pause right there, it's going to be back in sync again. You see, it's not drifted more. It might be like one as little as like a one hundredth of a frame off. So anyway, I'm going to zap ahead now to let's get a little more bold. We're going to go to 15 hours. So 15 hours into our test, hitting play, pause, 16, 16, 16, 17. Okay, so we're going to keep an eye on BPTRX1 and see if it is back in sync now. So it seems, okay, they're all in sync now, except actually 28 and 28. So this these are back in sync now. So it might have been that these, these first three devices might have been caught up. So... They're all still very accurate as far as I'm concerned. They're all basically in line with each other. Now they're all pretty much back in sync. So this one here probably drifted a slight bit farther forward. And if I hit play pause one last time, now they're all in sync except this one. So this one is maybe the one that's a little bit behind the other. So still accurate for 15 hours into our day. And we're going to be hating ourselves if we're working that. Now the dreaded 18-hour day, hitting play 
and pause 28, 28, 27, 27, 28, 27. They're all right there together. And 25, 25, 25, 24, 25, 24. They're all right there together. Again, 20, 20, 20, 20, 21, 20. Yeah, these are all accurate. Okay, so let's just say you're 29, 21 hours into the day. Now you're hating the 80s for scheduling this kind of a day. 28, 28, 27, 29. Okay, so this one here, it drifted a little bit forward. Now, keeping in mind, we're over, we're over, uh, we're approaching a full day. So at this point, we're 21 hours ahead. And so what's probably happened is if the time code is all starting to, if they were perfectly aligned, what's going to happen is they're going to drift ever so slightly. And what we're probably doing is like maybe this one has drifted slightly back and this one here is a little bit far, farther forward and we're probably paused right here on like one of these lines. So we might be perfectly aligned with this one that hadn't drifted at all and this one might have drifted one frame forward and backwards. So these are all what it looks like is is number five, BPTRX1 is one, or it's actually two frames off from the, the other one. So if I play pause... And it is now one frame off. So it's probably just the luck of the draw in the pause. So yeah, they're all one frame off again. So it seems to have corrected itself. One more time. Yeah, they're all in sync except this one here. So it's probably drifted a little bit more, but this is a BPTRX unit. So let's go ahead and look at the 24 hours. If you're still recording at 24 hours of the day, you hate everything about this show. Hopefully you're getting paid by the hour and a very good rate. So yeah, still this one is a, a slight bit ahead of the others. And 17, 17, 18, 18. So they're all like th this one here is now pulled back into these two. So these probably drifted a little forward. And 17, 16, 16, 16. So it looks like 10, 10, 9, 9, 9. So there's, they're all like a frame apart. So let's go ahead and jump in. Sure, 26 hours in, might as well. So 26 hours in, we're going to hit play, pause, and two, two, one, one, two, one. All within one frame apart, which is perfectly fine. And these are all like, this one here is one frame ahead. So it seems to have corrected itself. 15, okay, so here it looks like it's a little bit farther forward. It's drifted a little bit farther forward. BPTRX unit, all of these devices, which is the time code, slate, and the sync boxes, they're all pretty much exactly slam on. Accurate. So yeah, we're all basically in line. So let's look at this right before it dies, right before the first device died. Let's see if it actually, the uh, the master. So we're going to look at this one right here and see what happens to the time code as it approaches the end. And uh, we're going to see right here, it's going to be di dying here very soon. So at 19, I'm sorry, 29 hours and 15 minutes and 13 seconds, we notice it is still exactly accurate. So it does not start to die when the time code uh, or when the battery starts to die, the time code does not drift. So we're going to hit play pause again, 1111002. So it's still one frame ahead and the rest are probably, you know, maybe drifting either slightly behind or they're exactly on. These all look like they're exactly on. For the most part, okay, one more play pause, 16, 15, 15, 16, okay, and the, it's staying in accurate, in accurate sync. It's not starting to lose itself just yet, and right before it runs out, whoops, I need to hit this this pause button. Okay, so 17, 17, 16, 18, okay, so one more time, and we're about to lose this one right here. So 26, 26, 25, 26, 27. And now it's dead. So this box has now officially died uh, power-wise. And the others are staying in sync. So basically, it maintains its power very well as it approaches its uh, its point of death. So this one is now completely down. Uh, looking at one more time, and we're going to hit pause right before time code box number two, which is this one right here, dies. It is all pretty much in sync with everything. And we're going to hit play, pause. And when it dies, what happens? The level on it dies and it's, it's completely dead in the water. 24, 24. So yeah, these devices are, I would call, accurate. I mean, if you're seriously shooting for over 24 hours in a day, you have worse things to worry about than your time code drifting. You're, you're going to have to worry about, you know, your sanity, staying awake without killing your body from caffeine intake, or driving off the road as you're driving home. So anyway, what I'm going to say is these time code boxes 
every single one of these that we tested here, the slate, the time code boxes, and even the BPTRX units, they're all very, very accurate, especially when compared to anything that was released 10 years ago. The display of this slate is fast enough to verify accurate time code with a still shot, although it does roll ever so slightly if you do a ludicrous thing like put a video camera on it at 240 frames per second. On the time code boxes, it's more or less the same. This is, by the way, a textbook definition of nitpicking things that don't matter. So now we've tested battery life, charging time, and time code accuracy, leaving one test left to do. We take care of our own gear, but anytime we hand off something like a slate or a sync box to the camera department, it's not always taken care of the way we would like it to. This is the same department, by the way, that has told me such things in the past that have burned themselves into my mind as, don't be gentle, it's a rental, and if you don't want it dented, don't rent it. So, as much as I hate to say it, I think we might need to see how well these devices deal with being mildly bumped around a little bit. Put your hand in here, thumb. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, go ahead and slap it, please. Uh, try it again, please. Let's try this again. Try not to drop it. Okay. Here. All right. So the only real issue we ran into time code wise is that when the slate dropped at least one of the three times, the time code on it reset. So if this happens to you, bring up the Citus audio app again, hit sync. And then like, I'm gonna set it to time of day now. So I'm gonna hit this button here, hit sync, and it went ahead and resynced itself. And that was pretty quick. So as far as time code is concerned, we'll see it's, it's maintaining itself pretty, pretty well, despite being dropped on Bandrew's planet. Okay, so my phone is no longer able to connect to the slate. So at some point, this would need to be sent in for maintenance. But aside from, uh, Aside from like it blinking and flashing over and over again and resetting itself, I'll turn it off and back on just to see. Oh, off. It's restarting itself. So, battery I'll get that in a minute. Test. The battery dropped out. Battery test. There's a little bit of a rattle it's picked up. And after power cycling a couple of times, the face is pretty unscratched. There was a little bit of cosmetic uh, damage done to the side here, but for the most part, it looks like the sticks are in pretty good shape. A little bit of damage to the uh, to the aluminum uh, casing, the framing here. But aside from that, everything else is pretty much in good shape. I'm going to try one more time to connect up to the Citus app. Okay, it jammed that time. So now we'll see if it would be able to be slapped a couple of times. Now one of the cool things about the Deity Slates is that if you were to turn it off and then back on, it's supposed to maintain time code for about six hours roughly. And it definitely did through that power cycle. So provided it doesn't mess up for some reason like being dropped a few times on a granite surface then you shouldn't have an issue with it maintaining sync even if it goes off a few times so this is the tc1 time code box and because we hand that off to second acs we're going to see how how it would survive if they were to drop it a few times so It's still working just fine. So the only real damage we're seeing on this Deity TC1 is a little bit of cosmetic damage. It's still maintaining time code and says there's three hour, 30 hours left. Uh, aside from that, everything seems to be functional, at least time code wise. I have not checked anything coming out of it, but let's try the functionality. One, two, three, it should unlock. And it's not unlocking. Try again. It's not unlocking again. So I'm going to see if I can sync it to a time frame somewhere in the future. So I'm going to see if I sync it to time of day now, will it work? It seems to have taken instantly, which is nice. So the app is still functioning, even though the 
time code does not seem to want to unlock. It's suffered some damage here, but you know, it's to be expected. Aside from that though, it's still not really rough, probably because of the plastic. So this dial is no longer working. I can press it, but the dial is no longer functioning. So I can press that, lock it, but it's not gonna spin anymore. So it would have to go back to DED for repair. This is the TC1 that was dropped, or perhaps rather thrown a little bit since the excitement of being on Bandry's planet might have overwhelmed me. Uh, but I'll tell you this, it suffered very little cosmetic damage, and you might only see a little bit of a minor scratch a couple places despite being thrown multiple times and dropped. Now, it did actually suffer some damage. If you click the button one time to unlock the screen, one, two, three, you'll notice that the wheel no longer moves. However, if you use the Citus Audio app, it still does function and it sets time code and stuff whenever you want it to. That's fine. If you press and hold right here, it still does pop up the off button, which allows you to press and turn the unit off. So you can still do that. You don't have to wait for the battery life to completely drain. However, the time code slate is a little bit of a different story. It is here and it's fully operational. I did not rejam it recently, but it can still be slapped really hard and it can still be manhandled, but there is a slight little bitty thing about this. If you press the battery box, uh, battery slot down here, it will sometimes reset. All right, I'm gonna have to hit it a little bit. Okay, there it went. So maybe it was this box, maybe it was this side over here. There it went a little bit, it's resetting. But that's still me pressing on it a bit. This thing is rugged. This thing is rugged. I really have no complaints because I wasn't gentle at all to these. And guess what? If they're damaged on set, L and DM. So what do I think of the TC1 and TCS1? Well, I think they're solid as a rock. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you this also. They're going to make a lot of time code product manufacturers really pissed off. The time code accuracy, as far as I'm concerned, is spot on. You're not going to have any concerns with it at all. As a matter of fact, here's something else you're not going to have any concerns with. Transmitted time code from the next stage over affecting your time code devices. This is actually something a mixer I worked with had happened to him. He said that the next stage over was using the same exact time code system that he was on and their transmission was a lot stronger than his and it kept accidentally re-jamming his time code boxes. So that became a little bit of an issue. But because DD only syncs and jams time code boxes that are paired to using the Citus Audio app, and up to 20 devices at that, you're not going to ever have a concern with that because you're in control of your own time code devices. The build quality is so impressive that even if you allegedly willfully attempt to destroy either or both units, they will still continue to function. The slate still functions in and out on the side. The charging still works. And the only thing, as you saw before, that is a little temperamental is one of these battery doors. But then what did you expect to happen? On the time code box, guess what? It still charges. Time code still goes in and out thing works great. Both of these devices can still function great when you use it with the paired Citus Audio app. Considering that you could even set up your time code for high-speed frame rates, this allows for versatility and specialty applications. Not only that, it future-proofs the design of the devices. If I tested every single feature that these devices do on camera, it would take forever and you probably wouldn't want to watch it. So let me just say this, every single feature that I tested worked great. And let the truth be known, Deity's working on a firmware update that's going to add even more features. So, yeah, let me end this review someplace, okay? And even things like the integrated microphone was well thought out. You might say, well, geez, it adds a microphone, but it goes deeper than that. If you were to go out to your camera, you might expect time code to be extremely loud on one side and the audio to be low on the other. But the time code is actually a lower volume. So when you plug it up to your computer, it's not going to blast your ears off. It's great. These devices are wonderful, but they are not perfect. There are four very little nitpicky things, and believe me, they are small, that I would like to see different. The first one is with the time code slate. What do you see when you look at it along this axis? These screws stick out ever so slightly. That could put pressure on something in the camera bag and perhaps destroy something. It didn't for me, but I know it's a nitpicky thing, but guess what? On other modern slates, these are flush. So that's number one. The second thing is something that could be changed via firmware. So pay attention, Deity. In order for me to turn this TC1 off, I have to press the power button, press it three times to unlock it, and now it's unlocked. Press and hold it one, two, 
Three, yes or no, press it a sixth time, and now it is turning itself off. At the end of the day, a sound utility doesn't want to spend a lot of time shutting off all the time code boxes. And normally we would just pull power as opposed to going through a menu and trying to turn things off. That's not an option with the TC1s. So what would happen if I were to press and hold both of these buttons, because the wheel is a button as well, and after maybe two seconds, it said power off in three, two, one. And if you continue to hold them, it will turn itself off. No one is going to do that except someone who wants to turn them off. And it has that visual. Do you want to turn it off? Someone would release if they accidentally did this and got into this mode and didn't want to. So that would be really cool. And if you don't want to do that, Deity, then maybe see if the Citus Audio app could have an end of day procedure button that if you press it, it powers down all TC1s at the same time. That might be something that could be worked out as well. And just watch, DD is going to have this added to the firmware tomorrow. So number two of my nitpickiness is going to be resolved and completely useless to have in this video. Number three, if I have one time code box set up as a master node, and then I go into the slate and then go back to the main screen, it has now set whatever the last device is as the master node. Simple firmware fix could fix that and leave it as the master node until I set it otherwise. And yeah, that's probably fixed already also. Number four. The marker doesn't have felt on it, so you can't erase. I know, I know, I know, I know. And as a bonus, Deity, pay attention for a second. If each three pack of TC1s could have enough cables to redundantly supply each TC1 with one of every cable, I know it's a lot of extra accessories to have in that kit, but it would be nice to have each sync box automatically have every cable it needs when it goes to a camera. That way they can ride each sync box and not have to worry about it at all and you wouldn't have to buy anything additional. I know, I want it all included in this kit and if I don't get my way, wah, wah, wah. In short, it is my opinion that as of the time of this video, these are the most advanced and feature packed time code products on the market today. I think that they're going to be made even better tomorrow with more firmware updates that I'm sure Deity is working on even as we speak. And these are also priced well below the competition, which is complete lunacy in my opinion, but it's awesome. Us production sound people are going to love you even if your competition is going to be hating you and probably I won't say anything negative. But I will say this to you, Deity. Welcome to the world of truly professional products that pros like me are going to absolutely love using for years to come. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Soundspeech. Be sure to tune in the future for more product reviews, deep dives on those products, and as always, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.